Welcome back to Project 2 and the Yamaha S21 Project. This will be part 2 of the Scratch Built Cal series. I'll start off with saying again that I am not an expert and I've never done composite work of this magnitude before, so I don't intend for any of this to be perceived as instructional content. It's simply how I, a first time builder, went about doing it. Let's get on with it. I used a regular old joint compound for drywall as my bondo, if you will. To be honest, you can use whatever you want to achieve the end goal of having a mold in the shape of what you're after. After a few sessions of spreading and block sanding, I had this thing to a point where I was happy with it and I was ready to move on. I have a hard time not trying to fix every single low spot or pinhole, but at this point, perfection is the enemy of progress and it won't matter in the end. As long as the overall shape's there and you're not way off from a consistent surface, you're good to go. I've seen several people use saran wrap as their release film for a male mold similar to mine, so I decided on that path. I applied a couple layers with some uh, Super 77 spray adhesive. If you've ever struggled using plastic wrap, just add some spray glue to the mix and you're really in for a good time. The wrap's so thin that all the wrinkles and folds really don't add up to anything significant, so I got it covered and moved on to the next step, and for me that was two layers of regular weave fiberglass. Since the inner surface would be the surface that mounts to the aluminum of the firewall lip, I didn't want to worry about any carbon potentially promoting some corrosion issues down the road. Anytime that you do a wet layup with no vacuum bag, you inevitably will have a higher resin to fiber content adding weight and degrading strength of the end product. To combat this, it's important to keep things as flat as possible as you go along and sand back excess resin as much as possible, enough to just expose the fibers below but don't damage them. This allows for an optimal mechanical bond to the next layer and minimizes resin buildup. After those two layers of glass, I started with the carbon layers. I had a bit of leftover material from a previous project and I thought I'd use it up in the middle of this layup. It's got sewn in guidelines but they'll all be covered up by the layers of new fabric later so it won't show in the end. I started using peel ply over the seams and found it reduced the sanding time in between layers significantly. So I do recommend that for sure. As I progress through the layers you'll see I utilize more and more over the entire surface. It doesn't conform very well to the complex curves, uh, so there's always some sanding involved, but it does cut down on the amount a ton. I continued until I had two layers of carbon on everything, with the exception of the bottom of the scoop, before pulling it off the mold. And I was having a real hard time fighting gravity down there, and just figured it wasn't worth my time or the material to fight it. I'll get to that part later when I can stand this thing up on a table. I found this to be a really difficult process to film, as it just takes so much time to get to any milestone step worthy of producing a video over. It's hours and hours of the same thing over and over, but hopefully I got enough of it captured that you can visualize the steps that I took. I'll jump back in and narrate again when it's time to pull it off the form.
Okay, now for the fun part. I started with some gentle tugging and compressed air aimed just under the composite at the firewall, and I did have some success of loosening things up with that approach. A few hours of that progressed into securing some hooks into the plywood form at the front and pulling with cargo straps anchored to my truck. At this point, I had little concern about the foam mold underneath and just wanted to get it off. Again, this progressed into securing the aircraft to the same tree that I anchored to for ground run testing. More pulling and I was starting to get some movement now and I ended up drilling a few holes through the carbon surface to inject air right into the spots that didn't want to let go. At this point I'm like six hours into trying to demold this thing and finally it's starting to let loose so I pushed it back inside and with the sound of trumpets filling the air it slid right off. I then removed what was left of the foam and placed everything back on over the engine and secured it with a couple clicos for now. I was anxious to see if my spinner alignment was good and well, I'll let you be the judge of that. I couldn't be happier with the look and the fitment, and I'm more pumped than ever to continue work on the cow as I get a little bit closer to the beast that this will one day be. The major lesson learned for me is that plastic wrap is really not the best choice for a release element in a complex shape where shear forces are fighting the removal from the mold. I couldn't tell you what might be a better choice, but in the end, everything worked out okay. Be sure to let me know what you're thinking in the comments below and stay tuned for more scratch build cow progress in the near future. Thanks for watching.